Welcome everyone, Adam May the Woo here. This coordination of the hat and the shirt, completely unplanned. In fact, I wasn't gonna wear the hat until I got in my car and realized I had this in the back seat. I thought, heck yeah, I should use this to protect myself from the sunrise, even though right now it is slightly obscured by the clouds. It might rain, I did not bring my umbrella, but I did bring my scooter for a scooter tour of downtown Kissimmee, Florida, something I have not done in about a year. And this is going to be a little bit different, by the way, as a recording of this Wednesday, April 6th, 2022 scooter tour. I'm going to go through some of the side streets and some of the little obscure back roads that I normally do not traverse through because I am hoofing it. Now, today, I have this, so I'll be able to go into some of the nooks and crannies of downtown Kissimmee. Kissimmee is about halfway between Walt Disney World and St. Cloud, Florida, kind of right in the halfway point, about 20 miles from my homestead of the Celebration Florida. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? And as I ride down this way, I'm noticing the little manhole cover here that has the cows on it. States that Kissimmee was founded back in 1883. Sometimes you get some pretty good information by just looking, whatever you do, make sure you look down at the little sewer. Sewer great sewer holes. If at all possible, my game plan is to try to discover things I did not know, little areas that I didn't know much about. That's the plan. I cannot get inside here. This is known as the Field of Dreams. The Field of Dreams is kind of, sort of, locked up. Yeah, it's locked up. That's locked. But I think you could probably just take this and unwrap the chain. I'm not going to do that because I, I think the intention is to have the Field of Dreams locked. I did not realize that this was... Kissimmee's Field of Dreams until I saw this by pulling up here. Dedicated to the glory of God and honors R. Clyde Crotty for his many years of faithful service to the Methodist Church. The Field of Dreams. Isn't that interesting? Had no clue that there was a plot of land called the Field of Dreams. And there's a little gazebo here as well. And it is located right next to this newer building. Just zipping right along on this thing. And also over here is a old-timey baseball fencing behind home plate. Now over here on Clyde Street, is the Sun Drop-In Center at 512 on this corner. A little housing development, a little community, which I did never even really understood or even knew it existed until riding by on this, on this on the little scooter. Didn't know this was here, there's a shopping car here. Some of these businesses, I have to wonder if they're even still open. Example, the Hutch and such. Now it does say closed on the door. Now this looks like it's been active recently, but the sign up there has been taken down. You can faintly make out the words, the hutch and such. Now I'm gonna say this place definitely not in business anymore, but it still has the signage up top as well. Even though the letters have been removed, you can still read the wording there. I like this building though with the pillars here on the side. And that's peeking in the dirty window here. A camera right up, right up to the glass. Seven two eight, John Young. It is a very beautiful area. I had contemplated moving to downtown Kissimmee. No, it's still well, still a few blocks away from the downtown area. But it was one of the places I thought about moving back to St. Cloud. Thought about moving here to downtown Kissimmee. I chose Celebration. I'm pretty happy with my decision. But this is a beautiful area. I like this one over here on the corner of Vernon and Mabette. It's also for sale. A lot of these homes are for sale. That's a business there, but a lot of these other ones have for sale signs in front of them. The trees are magnificent. And it goes from you know, traditional concrete into the old-timey brick through here. I bet some of these homes are like 100 years old, especially that two-story one up here, like plantation style. 
right up here, I was not expecting to see this type of telephone booth. This is a surprise. You never know what you're going to find. Oh, this telephone booth has been converted into a library. I put the kickstand down. Yeah, this is one of those give a book, take a book libraries. That's awesome. Now, I've seen these mobile libraries before, but I've never seen one in a telephone booth like this. Isn't that cool? Some really great looking homes through here. Some of them need a little bit of work. They're pretty fantastic. This one has a balcony all the way at the top. I like that. Way up there, like a third floor balcony. Here's someone on a golf cart coming by. Okay, inside here, there's a little alleyway. There are these two painted murals, but then inside the alley with the old timey tile work down here, this gate is open. Look, there's a barber shop over to the side. There's these little paintings here. All through here. Take a look at these. With the angel wings. I never knew this was back in here. I just tucked away in this alley. There's some picture frames. Oh, I love that up top. Look at that. You know what that reminds me of? I think there's a room in, the, in Muppet Visions at Hollywood Studios, which I think was the last Jim Henson project he ever worked on before he passed away. It kind of reminds me of the little atrium from Muppet Vision. And that one scene, I don't know why. Didn't mean to have a Muppet, Muppets reference in there, but yeah. Okay, now we're coming back out the back inside. Glad these gates were open. Pretty neat. A little bit of a breeze out here today too. Got not only the US, not only the state, but also the city flag up there waving in the breeze. The Kissimmee city flag, Florida state, and the US flag waving in the breeze. It's a nice day. A lot of good murals around here. There's one up there of a bird up on the top over there. There's another one right here around this corner. This is the corner of East Darlington and Broadway. There is a tiger, which I don't recall this being here last year when I was kind of perusing around. There's been a lot of murals added in recent years. This tiger, and then they always like to show the artists if the artist's name is on there. And if you follow this around to the corner of Pleasant Street, you have these which date back from, gosh, I don't know how many decades these paintings are. Here's Richie's Barbershop. Then you got Carly's Candies and Cakes. Got a clown down here. I've showed this before. I always like to pop in back here to this little side street next to the parking garage. This is a parking garage, not a business. This is all parking, free Toho Square parking garage. I like that this still exists and has not been painted over or tagged up or anything. Pretty cool. This might be Richie. That might be his barbershop. Richie's barbershop. There's a couple guests down in there waiting to get their hair cut. This is neat. Matador's Taco Bar has this sweet transportation device here underneath another mural and these horses here at Broadway Plaza. Now one block down at I think it's called Three Sisters Bar and Grill. They used to have one of the Epcot, you know, not shuttle buses, but the, the Epcot omnibuses, the two-story omnibuses. Down there, one more block next to Makinson's Hardware. So this is a whole other subject I want to cover because Makinson's has since closed in the last five or six months or so since I've been down here. But they used to have an omnibus from Epcot, but it's, it's no longer around. So I think someone up north bought it. Well, it used to be right over here. It used to be parked right over here where they're building this new Structure right over there in the corner next to Makinson's Hardware. Yeah, they're building something new. No more Omnibus. 
this whole area is growing considerably and changing considerably since back in the day. Yeah, Macon says, I think, don't quote me on this, but it was one of the oldest hardware stores left in the state, but it just closed last year, or six, last six months. And just pulling around the back here. Yeah, hardware store is no more. You're, you're in it. You're in it. <laughs> yeah, there it is. The old Make a Sense Hardware. Those guys wanted to be in the video, so I put them in the video. Hey, this is the Lynx bus station up here, the Lynx bus drop off, I believe. Not a lot of these hard type of hardware stores left. You know, a lot of the big box stores kind of taken over. Make it since held on for a long time, though. Frankly, I never thought they'd go away. They kind of outlasted a lot of the other other independent ones. Ah, oh, my big brimmed hat there. There's another new one. Kissimmee. Greetings from. Sometimes you can tell when someone's from out of town because they say Kissimmee instead of Kissimmee. I say I when I go to, when I travel, I always say town names as if I'm, I don't live there because I don't live in a lot of towns, so. It's an understa it's understandable how someone will pronounce it differently. The locals call it Kissimmee. Those from out of town call it Kissimmee. It's usually how it goes. And yet another one, right over there. And that noise was cars going over the tracks right there, the train tracks. No train horn through this area. And of course, can't forget about the monumental, I didn't mean to make that pun, monument of the states. Very tall sculpture that's been here for many, many years with rocks and other items from different states across all of the US. Placed here back in 1943. At least that's the date that's on that particular inscription. The monument of states. Here in Kissimmee. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania over there. There's New Hampshire. There's an item from Michigan. Massachusetts also represented. The governor of Ohio back in 1941 gave this, this little unique looking item that looks like something from the prehistoric age. Also came from Michigan, Massachusetts, Texas, Kentucky. Gulf of Mexico up there, that little item, Tennessee, Indiana. Got some items from Arkansas. And also, not just in the States, but also there's some from Africa. And hey, that's from Illinois, Nova Scotia right there. Pretty neat that this stands here. Now last time I was down here, this little Ruby's Plaza was not open. They are open today, so I got myself a water here. And a lot of areas down here were blocked off, you know, because the extension of what happened in 2020 and until last year, you couldn't get into certain areas. So the lighthouse over there you couldn't get to. But I think today, everything's accessible. So stores are back open, at least a little cafe. And the lighthouse over there, you can see it kind of out on the little, the little walkway out to the water. So go see the lighthouse. It's kind of a relaxing day. Lighthouse approaching. Hello, bird. Big Ben, Parliament. Oh. 
closer to the water, it gets a lot windier. Which makes sense, but just stating the obvious. Years ago, you were allowed to walk out on this dock. Those days are over. It's now restricted. This stanchion hinders anyone from going past onto the, may not be structurally sound anymore. Now looking at this, probably not structurally sound. Back in the day, you could walk out on this. A lot of new developments popping up over there too, apartments or condos. Beautiful day. The information placard that used to be here is now gone too. And from what I recall, the it would explain how the water would go in here. Well, to be honest, I don't even remember what it said. <laughs> It's, it's been a while since I read what was on there. It has something to do with the lake water going into here and then recycling around. Back over at the hardware store now. I'm starting to wonder if this will be repainted over, so I probably should document this for posterity, just in case. I would hope it doesn't, but you know, what's to say? You can hope in one hand and you know what in the other. See, I don't know what, I don't know what the phrase is. Right up top there, there's a lady in the window. Make it since hardware. Eighteen eighty one. Carol Makinson and Jim JM Katz opened a general merchandise store on the corner of Darlington Avenue and Pleasant Street. This might be the original building. In 1883, help arrived when William Burroughs Makinson Sr. arrived and invested some money into Carroll's business. The following, W. May Makinson took over the business and opened what is today Florida's oldest hardware store and Kissimmee's oldest business. Yeah, it was Florida's oldest hardware store. It's now gone. to make it since hardware. A piece of history. There's a store over here that looks interesting called the Hollow Pumpkin. Now they are closed at the moment, Beetlejuice here. Beetlejuice has said that they are closed. I'm not gonna say his name one more time it will come to life. That's like a pretty cool little place gift shop for the spooky obsessed, their slogan says. Only open on the weekends. And back over to the parking lot where my car's parked, put the scooter away and drive around to some, a few other spots. That old ambulance that just went by was a, now used for a plumbing business. That was interesting. Looks as if this grocery store has finally closed. Now, before it was a Sedanos, or Sedanos, it was an Albertsons. That's what I recall it as when I lived in this area in the 90s. I lived in Kissimmee. I lived in St. Cloud for a while. I lived in Kissimmee in the late 90s, early 2000s. It was an Albertsons. I would do my grocery shopping here. And next to Albertsons, but this took over for Albertsons, and then this closed recently since the last time I was passed by here. And over next to the pharmacy on this end, it's like a clothing store, but that clothing store used to be a music store. Now back in the early 90s, 93, 94, around then, 92, 93, 94, I got my license in 91. I was 17, I started driving around and started buying cassettes and bought CDs over at a music store over there and they had a Ticketmaster booth. Now it's called Donato Clothing. And right inside there, I would go in and I would ask the employee 
what concerts are coming to town and they would list off the concerts. I'd say, I'll take two of those, I'll take two of those, I'll take two of those. And I would just go to a mess load of concerts. I'd always ask a friend to go. I bought my Nirvana and Breeders ticket in Lakeland in Florida. I bought it right inside there from Ticketmaster, just before the internet. You couldn't just search what bands were coming through. You had to, you had to go to either Ticketmaster or get a magazine that had it in or see it in the paper. But that's where I bought my, my hard ticket to Nirvana, right in there. That it what is now a clothing store. Now, when I worked here, it was Office Max. Worked here five years. Then after I left, they merged into Office Depot. It was Office Depot for a while. Now, it's gonna be a Planet Fitness. Look at that. It's like getting a little behind the scenes construction update. No more Office Max, no more Office Depot. Putting the sign up here, Planet Fitness. Oh, they changed the front doors too. Right next to the Osceola Mall, it used to be attached to the Osceola Mall. The mall's called something different now. There were two movie theaters. This is one of them. The other one's been converted into something that's been utilized for something different for many years now. But this one was under renovations, but now the construction has just kind of halted. But you could tell it used to be a movie theater. Fact. Right over there is where the posters were. And you can even see some of the original signage that says enter over there on that end. Extreme close up. Zoomed way in. Yeah, this place has been closed for a long time. As I'm driving back towards Celebration here on Highway 192, Pirates Island Adventure Golf, from what I can tell, is no longer quite operational, closed. Either temporarily or for good. There have been a lot of miniature golf courses on 192 that have fallen by the wayside over the years. Wouldn't surprise me if it's permanent. I hope it's not, because this was an awesome place with the pirate ship and everything. The grass is a little grown over. Some of the props have fallen down. This headstone here. Yeah, I see it's kind of the woods decomposing. I used to work at a miniature golf course, River Adventure Golf. Also now abandoned, grown over, really nothing left. They removed most of everything. You obviously don't want to jump to any conclusions. They could just be closed for the time being, but not looking good. R matey, a foul smell. Be assured it ain't our sea. Methinks it's that village sewer tank. The lift station. Ah, over there. I did play a round of golf here years ago. It's been I don't know, 20 years. Here's Blackbeard's challenge. The interesting thing is I didn't see any signage of any type saying open, closed, stay off the property, nothing. Just traffic going right by there. In fact, when I pulled up, there was someone else who I thought worked here walking around and I realized it wasn't an employee or an owner. It was just someone else just looking around. Looks as if some skateboarders came in here, laid some wood down using that as a ramp. Nice little skate spot. Ah, what's the saying? Another one bites the dust. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Let's just say I'm wrong. This is a staple of Highway 192 history. Hope I'm wrong. Everything's pretty much been removed from the front counter and the office area. Good photo off there. Reminds me of the one in Magic Kingdom. Coming out of Frontierland on the way to the Haunted Mansion.
the bell up there. This place is awesome. I'm always sad when a miniature golf course goes away. At some point in the future, might be distant future, I have to stop back by and see if it's reopened. Now this is interesting. This right here states the name. Billy Bowlegs. When I was a youth, I ran in a race. It was a lot thinner and a lot faster back then. I was, I was very young. I ran in a race in the panhandle of Florida when I lived in Niceville, Florida. I think it was Fort Walton Beach. There was a Billy Bowlegs midnight run and I ran in the Billy Bowlegs run. Yeah, he was a pirate. It's amazing what you remember from when you're young. It really is. All right, pulling back into celebration now and that's gonna do it for today. Casual day, taking my scooter, cruising around downtown Kissimmee and then a few other spots on Highway 1 and 2, a little update. Lots of things on 192, heading past the water tower here. Not a lighthouse, here, this is a water tower. I'll see you in the next video, the vlog. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, the vlog.